Hi, my name is Wynne Farrier, and I'm here today to talk to you about Lifid2. I'm here with my colleague, Elliot Hand, and both of us work in PwC's Financial Services Risk and Regulation Department in the UK. We're going to talk to you about trade and transaction reporting. Trade and transaction reporting is important for a number of reasons. These reasons touch a variety of areas. These include reporting to the regulator, the systems that will be used to report, and the data that underlies this reporting. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to my colleague, Elliot Hand. So thanks, Wynne. My name's Elliot Hand. I'm manager of the Financial Services Risk and Regulation Practice, and we're going to be talking today about transaction reporting, which is seen by the regulators as one of their priorities when it comes to MIFID II implementation. So let's get started. This year, we'll see many organisations preparing for MIFID II and its associated legislative regulation, MIFIR. This is due to become law in early January 2018, following national transposition of MIFID II into local law towards the middle of this year. MIFID II is one of the widest reaching changes to financial market regulation that the financial services industry has ever seen. It will affect almost all firms dealing in or processing financial instruments across Europe as legislators aim to promote increased transparency, competitiveness and financial stability. The new regulation will overhaul Europe's trading landscape, tightening the organisational requirements of investment firms and trading venues and introducing extensive changes to reporting around transactions and transparency requirements. These new requirements will cover many organisations operating in and around financial services that were previously exempt from legislation. The regulation expands the scope of transaction reporting covering all financial instruments beyond solely focusing on equities and changes the nature of reporting for those previously covered. In 2007, MIFID I introduced the concept of a harmonised transaction reporting regime across Europe with the aim of detecting and investigating potential market abuse. It is an area that the regulators have taken very seriously, with significant fines being levied on investment firms, not just for cases of market abuse, but also for failures in their transaction reporting obligations, such as the failure to report transactions in a timely manner, the incomplete reporting of transactions, or failure to provide accurate transaction reports. Despite this, regulators felt that the existing regulations for transaction reporting did not go far enough to provide comfort that the markets were operating fairly and as intended. To address this, MIFID II broadens the objective of the regulation. Now, regulators are not only required to guard against market abuse, but it must also monitor the fair and orderly functioning of the market to promote market integrity. MIFID II is made up of the recast regulation, MIFIR, and the directed, MIFID. Transaction reporting stems from the regulation and so must be implemented universally by member states within the European Union. Unlike the directive, which must be transposed into each member state's regulations and so can lead to some divergence. In this presentation, where we refer to MIFID, I am talking about this component that sits in the regulation. ESMA retains overall responsibility for market integrity. And to achieve this, the national competence authorities in each jurisdiction, such as the FCA in the UK, must monitor the activities of the investment firms and trading venues to ensure that they are acting fairly, honestly and professionally, whilst promoting the integrity of the market. Whether firms trade liquid instruments on an approved venue such as a regulated market, a multilateral trading facility or an organised trading facility, or trade illiquid products, they will need to report transactions to regulators. The report should be made to the competent authority, either by the investment firm itself 
an approved reporting mechanism acting on behalf of the investment firm or by the trading venues through whom system the transactions were completed. MIFID 1 required that firms report on 24 fields in relation to cash equities and bonds primarily. MIFID 2 expands the scope of the reportable fields up to 65 and will significantly increase the depth and complexity of the information that is required. Further to this, it also expands the scope of the reporting requirements to cover other asset classes, in particular foreign exchange, commodity and interest rate derivatives. A far smaller subset of transactions will remain out of scope for MIFID II, primarily those covered by other regulations, such as the Securities Financing Transaction Reporting Regulation shown in this non-exhaustive out-of-scope list. MIFID I defined a transaction as the purchase or sale of a financial instrument, but MIFID II expands on this to include any acquisition, disposal or modification of a financial instrument. The receipt or transmission of an order is now included in the definition of an execution. This would include the original MIFID I definition, but also includes simultaneous acquisitions and disposals of instruments, such as where exercising an option or entering into or closing out an instrument. In addition, a transaction does not only have to include trades executed on an EU trading venue, now derivatives traded outside of the EU, but where the underlying is traded within the EU, will need to be reported a further significant impact is the removal of the transaction reporting user pack exemption for discretionary managers who transmit orders to a broker. As such, many buy side firms are now going to be required to provide reporting for the first time. The following data field slides give an overview of the vast number of additional fields that would need to be reported to regulators. As we mentioned earlier, MIFID 1 had 24 reportable fields, but only 13 are also required in MIFID 2. And so investment firms will need to provide reporting on 52 new or amended fields. In the following slides, I'll highlight some of the areas of greatest challenge for investment firms. The list of instruments captured has been expanded to cover almost all instruments traded in European markets, with the notable addition of OTC products. In addition, non-EU based branches of EU firms will also need to provide transaction reporting, which is likely to have a significant global impact. To identify the new instruments, the regulators require that transaction reports contain codes, both for the classification of financial instruments and then a specific instrument code known as an ISIN, the International Securities Identification Number, as it's more commonly referred. A new MIFID II requirement is the need to identify the trader or algorithm responsible for the decision and the execution of the transaction. This leads to a number of challenges for investment firms. They need to define whom has the primary responsibility for the transaction and then address subsequent data privacy concerns that arise for this individual. Transaction reporting must now include a record of the first five characters of the given trader's first and family name, or first and surname if you prefer, in addition to their date of birth recorded by year, and then month, and then day. If a group of people are making the decision to trade, then the firm will need to assign a primarily responsible person to record. Even in the case of algorithmic trading, firms will need to assign unique and consistent codes to their algorithms and map these to the given trade upon execution. MIFID 2 also introduces a number of flags into the reporting process to help them identify transactions that may have overlapping requirements with different regimes, such as EMIR or SFTR. Here we have included some examples of these indicators, such as the waiver flag, to indicate if the transaction was executed under a pre-trade waiver. For example, where above size, specific size of a transaction identifier. 
If the transaction is a short sell, it may fall under the scope of the short selling regulation. And if so, be applicable and identified as falling with either with the exemption or not. If a transaction relates to an OTC execution, then it may well have equivalent reporting in EMIR. And so there are additional flags that apply here, such as the illiquid instruments identified. As the MIFID II deadline of January 2018 approaches, investment firms are likely to face a number of challenges in the implementation of their transaction reporting programs. However, the regulators are unlikely to take a lenient position around non-compliance. The FCA have indicated that they will increase the penalty for transaction reporting non-compliance from £1 per breach under MIFID I to £1.50 per breach under MIFID II, reflecting the importance they place on this element of the regulation. One of the main reasons for the delay to the implementation of MIFID II was to give the regulators themselves time to prepare, and so they are likely to take a dim view on non-compliance. The FCA Market Data Processor, MDP, is going to be available for UAT testing from June, with other regulators in the other jurisdictions likely to be following similar implementation schedules. Investment firms have an obligation to ensure the accuracy and completeness of their data, and so will be required to enhance their systems, processes, and controls in order to meet the transaction reporting obligations. MIFID II requires that entities are identified as an LEI, which may be challenging for investment firms. Clients will be required to provide them with a recognized LEI, and where one is not in place, the investment firm may not be able to execute the transaction on their behalf. This could be particularly challenging for firms who have clients based outside of the EEA, and so not subject to these requirements or require an LEI for their own jurisdictions. Similarly, investment firms may have a reliance on their clients to provide them with management information or MI that they themselves struggle to generate. For example, a firm that has multiple trading desks trading a given instrument could potentially struggle to identify which transactions reflect their short positions if they do not possess the requisite MI. Both buy and sell side investment firms are going to need to work together to address these challenges, to be ready in time for the MIFID II deadline so that they can continue to service their clients. And so you should think to yourselves, will your firm be ready? Thanks for watching, and we do hope you found this video informative and interesting. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to get in contact. And also, please remember to like our video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you'll be able to find lots of other great Mifid 2 content.